going to finish this one. This will be the fourth tape. Um, if you see the single videos uh, and don't connect it to the others, then you don't get the gist of it. And even with the four, you won't. Any, uh, you wouldn't. Anyway, this is where I'm just showing some of the harassment that was done to me. This was handed to me on the day that Larry Fl uh, Flint was shot. Uh, March the 6th, this is all four up here on the Appalachian Trail. <clears throat> uh, Larry Flint, of course, was shot March the 6th of 78 in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I'm living in Marietta doing the book at um, Moonraker Apartment. And the name of my book was MD, A License to Kill, by the way. And later, a uh, license to kill with Timothy Dalton came out, like they're supporting me. It's a 007 in who I say I am. And Moonraker, of course, was uh, Roger Moore. And they even mentioned it's kind of out of space thing, too, involved going out in space. But they mention a uh, really mind control. And that, that's what I was writing about in part about programming people to run up and shoot like they did Dr. Warren and Rosina Matthews in Cobb County, who had worked at Larry McDonald, U.S. Congressman doctor that I wrote about. And uh, they knew too much, let me put it that way, how deaths were made to appear of natural causes, et cetera, et cetera. Now then, this is where I, they ran me to the uh, up and down the side of the road. I had no place to be. And this has been done in plain sight. And uh, people treating me, you don't know how. They don't want this told. They do not. Uh, I could never get back in touch with Mr. Flint anymore, even though he had shown me the uh, parody that was going to be published about Jerry Falwell um, of Liberty University. He's deceased now. But... Um, when I was out there during that campaign, uh, Larry Flint uh, showed me the, uh, what do they call it, the um, galley proof of uh, the parody against um, Jerry Falwell, the Reverend. I never knew, and he told me then they have to be done three months ahead. So they knew that this was going to be... Uh, published in 84, April of 84, and he says that I know who's responsible for his shooting March the 6th, and I think he called me, and I tried to get back with Hustler, they furnished me a car because my jobs were shut down, I couldn't get to my kids, didn't know if they were alive or dead, really, this is April of 84, I will tell you this, they wouldn't hang up on me where I'd been able to call Mr. Flint. They wouldn't hang up on me when I'd call Hustler where I'd been put right through to him. Uh, they would put me on hold. Okay, um, I tried to turn the car back in and uh, wouldn't take it. There was no <laughs> nowhere to turn it in unless I left it on the side of the road, and I laughed because it's such hell and so hideous. How, how do you deal with any of it? Um, but I I had uh, moved up to D.C. and um, I live in the Falls Church. And when this came out, it came to my door. Now, supposedly, I'd had no contact with Mr. Flint or anything. A hustler would put, or they'd put me on hold. And then they'd switch me somewhere else and put me on hold. So they never hung up on me. It's like saying, we're still here, uh, but. So anyway, this was sent to my home, my apartment there in Falls Church. So obviously it was special delivery. So they knew it was sent from, uh, which was odd, it was packaged in mail from St. Cloud. That was, by the way, that he lived on St. Cloud when I was out there in Beverly Hills. Uh, but it, Minnesota, it was the Twin Cities there um, in Minnesota. I believe there's three of them actually together. But when I got this, I got a phone call. And obviously they knew where I was and sent it to me. And <clears throat> the gentleman said, hello, uh, I'm calling from Hustler Magazine for Larry Flint. And he said, I'm, um, <laughs> there's just nothing funny about it. I have to laugh through it all. Thank God I suppose that I still can. Um, oh, Malcolm Barber. 
uh, and I said, what are you talking about, Malcolm Barber? I said, you're working for Hustler Magazine. I said, you're a FBI agent out of Macon, Georgia, Atlanta, because I had met him down there. I'd been in the office introduced to him, and he's a very likable person from what I remember. He had black hair, crew cut, and sprinkled with gray. And a very likable, nice man. I said, well, you work, um, you're calling from Hustler, you're FBI. Yeah. And um, he said, well, Mr. Flint has lost you. He doesn't know where you are. He's so upset. He's looking all over for you. Well, I've I've tried to tell you in all these videos part of what's been done and, and the mechanism used and what I was writing about, how they shot Larry Flint. They end up taking his uh, power of attorney, and the person was programmed to shoot him, and that's why Mr. Flint in part helped me, I suppose. But, but I'm going to try to end it with this. And I live in fear. I don't go to the cops anymore or the uh, the media, Channel 10, uh, CBS, ABC, Fox, all of them, uh, NBC, all know this. They knew it when I came, and <clears throat> they will not touch it. Um, you, I'm telling you about mind control murders and who's doing it and uh, who I am is the number one problem with it all. If they're told about who I am and what they've done to me in plain sight, uh, I've been told that it would rock the foundation of uh, everything. The banks, everything. I'm Victoria the Second, daughter, legal heir to the bridge crown, not Elizabeth, not her father who sold out his own brother and helped kidnap me. My dad, King Edward VIII, I'll say it again, was married to Claudia O'Keefe, sister to artist Georgia O'Keefe, born in the United States, and a double was used to marry Wallace Simpson. Now, all this is history would record that. It's all a lie. Now then, I want to get to the murders here in Roanoke. So obviously Mr. Flint knew that I was going to be here in 83 when he showed me that galley proof of uh, Jerry Falwell, the parody, and then Jerry Falwell sued him in the federal building here where they locked me up in the federal building for living in the National Forest where they'd run me, where I froze and starved. But anyway, Mr. Flint was there. He was sued by Jerry Falwell, the parody that he had shown me uh, in Hustle Magazine. I'm up on the mountain starving and freezing, and, um, of course, he didn't call me or anything. So people would use that to discredit me with, well, why didn't they even bother calling you? Well, I'm just going to skip to this before this tape goes out. There's been the Virginia Tech shootings, the 33, April the 16th of 07. There's been a long list of murders that happened there that are under that were mind control murders deliberately done, and at Charlottesville, University of Virginia. I'm going to mention um, Alexis Murphy, who Randy Taylor has been, although they didn't find her body, he's been found guilty, and he's in prison. Now then, you've got Morgan Harrington, her father's psychiatrist um, here in Roanoke at Carillion. He also taught, and uh, he may still do that, at uh, Virginia Tech, and she was a student there. He taught psychiatry there. Now then, supposedly, a black man uh, it was... Uh, the photos are put out of him that they think might have killed Morgan Herring's, and they found her body. Now then, I want to go, these people, by the way, all know this. The, the media, they all know about mind control murders. They know about me. Nobody has put up billboards. In other words, I live in fear of being locked up for telling it. I've lived a hell of a life, and all I've been done is run from one hellhole to another. Now then, there's a British young girl that's a student, and I want to get this in in case her family sees it. I hope she's found alive. They're British just like me, English. She spent her uh, summer vacation. She goes to Virginia Tech, a student in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Alabama's where they took me, Molson. Huntsville is NASA, which the British and Germans built, by the way, in my being a hostage. She went there to...